Hello and welcome to Eskimo TV. I'm talking today to Saga Kasiri. Saga is a cl senior clinical embryologist and PGS, PGD coordinator at London Fertility Centre in Harley Street. She's been a specialist in the field of embryology for 18 years and worked in top IVF clinics in the UK. Saga has made four TV programs on infertility, been interviewed by BBC and written a number of articles on infertility and assisted conception techniques. Hi, Saga, how are you? Hi, Joanne, thank you very much. Saga, let's talk today about what is a clinical embryologist? So that's the first question. A clinical embryologist is, um, is a scientist, so you, uh, you would have a background in science, uh, classified, on, um, you know, uh, perhaps on the reproductive biology um, or human biology, um, a clinical sci a scientist that is directly involved with creating life through IVF and the ART, the assisted reproduction technology uh, procedures. Um, a clinical scientist um, or embryologist uh, basically would go through uh, perhaps doing a degree and master's in, in, uh, in related fields. Um, and from there on, uh, there is at least two years uh, training uh, of an embryologist that you need to do um, before you can actually start working as a junior embryologist. Um, the two years training, for example, in, in different countries, they've got different policies. But in UK, uh, it's very difficult to get in the field. Obviously, it's a small field, and it's a very competitive field, and, um, and applications are quite numerous when a job is advertised as a trainee. Um, and what is interesting is it is a kind of job that is very rewarding, but at the same time, it's, it's a very highly pressured job uh, working with eggs and, and sperm and embryos. But uh, on, on very difficult days, we, we all look forward to getting those positive pregnancy results. Um, I think uh, as a clinical embryologist, you go through years of training and no two days would be the same at work because every patient is an individual and every patient has their own special case. Uh, that you deal with on a daily basis. Why do clinical embryologists in particular need to keep up to date on current regulations and legislations regarding topics such as fertility and IVF treatment? Sure. It's a very fast growing and highly researched field. You know, on a daily basis, we've got uh, new research, abstracts, um, you know, uh, advices, suggestions coming on. It's also an extremely highly ethical uh, field to be working in because you look, you're working with creating life and therefore it's, it's very important for the embryologists to be emotionally switched, switched on knowing ethically what they're doing and also being able to keep up with all the new technique and the latest research that come out because every single one of these would contribute to how well you're treating the patient and what the outcome will be. And if, you, if you're not um, basically being trained well in your field, if, if you have, for example, not uh, being told or informed about new technology, you could be doing the same things over and over in a laboratory and, and perhaps not giving the patients the best possible chance poss you know, that, that of producing a, a, a live birth uh, for the patient. And it's, it's very sad uh, that, that there are unfortunately some clinics that don't keep up to date. Um, but Maybe perhaps I'm biased. Working in the UK, we are highly regulated by uh, uh, an authority called Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority (HFEA), where all embryologists get, um, you know, get training, 
uh, we have associate, sorry, uh, who get training or monitored on a yearly basis. So basically, if you're ICSI trained, for example, which is one of the high technique of, of uh, assisted reproduction technology, if you are an ICSI practitioner, you need to send your results on a yearly basis to HFEA. This gets monitored and, and, and they make sure that you perform uh, at, at a benchmark that they have sent, that are set so that you are, your performance is closely monitored. We also have Association of Clinical Embryologists in UK, again, who is a body that um, has set up all the training and professional qualification for the embryologists. Um, we also, for example, do embryo biopsy, uh, which is when we remove one or two cells from, from the embryo and send it for genetic testing. That's, again, a very invasive technique that needs quite a lot of practice, and, and the results of the practitioner are, again, uh, very much monitored and, and kept up to date with the latest regulations as well. Thank you, Sada. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you.